Hey, hey guys, welcome to the vlog. So what is the most common type of web developer job is going to be out there? Are you going to be building the next Facebook from scratch with Node.js? Or are you going to be building the next WordPress.com with PHP and Laravel? Are you going to be building these complex apps like Studio Web, for a matter of fact, with a complex advanced framework, whether you use Python Django, Node and JavaScript, PHP Laravel, Java Spring. No, no. The most likely situation is that you're going to be working on small and medium-sized businesses and web professionals will be building WordPress-based sites with custom mini apps, perhaps. You might be modifying uh, Shopify sites and deploying those for people or maybe even deploying Wix-based things because the web builders, the Shopify's, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, for basic stuff, it works. But beyond the basics, you need to have a professional hand at that. So I think that uh, web professionals, as I like to call them, it encompasses a general, kind of like a GP in uh, medical, like you got the medical doctors that are general practitioners. They don't specialize in brain surgery, which would be kind of the equivalent of a Node.js master or a PHP Laravel master. No, the most common doctor out there is the GP, the general practitioner, someone who takes care of most people's medical needs. That is what a web professional is. So you might one day do a PayPal integration, another day set up WordPress theme, customize it another day, maybe modify and add some smarts to a Wix-based site. You might in deploy a Shopify site and help them with their social strategy. This is where a lot of the web professional jobs are going to be. Don't get me wrong, there's going to be plenty of work if you want to get into that space where you're going to be building highly complex and advanced apps from scratch, whether you use Node.js or PHP Laravel or Python Django, etc. That being said, a little tangent here, I think for the vast majority of small and medium sized businesses and startups, if it's web based, they're going to be using either Node.js, JavaScript, or PHP Laravel. Doesn't mean that they're never going to use other technology stacks that are competitive, like JavaScript, .NET, Python Django. No, no. But for the most part, I think they're going to be using those two, two technologies for a bunch of reasons, which I've discussed in other videos. So let's get back to the subject at hand here. So when you are looking at the career of a coder, a coder's career, there are many different angles and many different tangents you can go on. And if you go through my back catalog of videos on this channel, you'll see them. But at the end of the day, I think that for every advanced app that's going to be built with Node.js, there's probably going to be 500 thousands of jobs where you're going to modify and build up a WordPress-based site or work on a Shopify site for somebody. The money can be equally as good no matter where you go, depending on, on how you structure things. So people are saying, how can that be? How can somebody who's just modifying a Shopify make as much as a Node.js developer, right? Because a Node.js developer from scratch who's got three, four years experience is going to make a lot of money. There's no question they deserve that money because they're doing some pretty advanced things. That said, if you are very advanced with your work with uh, tools like WordPress or Shopify or Wix or building uh, simple sites from scratch for people, you're going to have very advanced workflows and add-on services and so forth, that is going to make your time much more valuable. So here's one of the, uh, I'll use the word trick, because it's not really a trick, but one of the strategies that I teach in my freelance course. So when you're first starting off as a freelancer, and I'm just going to use North American numbers, you have to adjust this to where you live. Remember, people in North America, like uh, San Francisco, they make much more money than you would make doing the same job in India, but in San Francisco, your house will cost you a million, five, two million dollars, whereas, you know, it cost you $50,000 somewhere else, right? So you got to always look at the cost of living when you're looking at salaries. That said, so I'm just going to use these numbers. So let's say when you first started out as a freelance web developer, 
uh, web professional, we'll call, call it rather, and you're making only $20 an hour. You start setting up people's sites, setting up their domains, getting their WordPress up, or getting their Wix up, or getting their Shopify up, or building something simple from scratch with Bootstrap, bing, bing, boom, do a simple cart with uh, a shopping cart with uh, PayPal, or maybe use Shopify, whatever, integrate with Stripe, these kind of things, right? So you are a developer, but you're not developing some monolithic app from some some very complex system from scratch like studio web or uh, you know youtube or something you're, you're you're just putting together the pieces of all these tools that are out there which is what developers do all the time by the way even if you're just building something from scratch with node js as an example or python django etc you're still using all those tools right node js is a tool is a is, a, is an engine that you're using if you're using a web framework on top of that like express you're using somebody else's code, right? So don't ever think that if you're using WordPress, you're you're missing out. You're you're be, you're cheating somehow because you're using a, a pre-built system, or using Shopify even, which is even more automated. You you're cheating somehow. You're because you're using a pre-built system. Well, if you're using Node.js, you're using a pre-built system. You're using MySQL. You're using a pre-built system, right? Using Linux Server, you're using a pre-built system. There are different levels. But you get the idea. Anyhow, so you start off and you're, let's say, in the freelance game. And because you're a beginner, you're charging only 20 an hour for the sake of argument. And that's what it's worth. And you're doing the work. But, you know, within a year or two, what happens is all of a sudden you're going to become much more efficient. You're going to know the space much better. Meaning, you know, you're going to know how to quickly deploy Wix or Shopify much more quickly. You're going to know how to create websites, leverage templates much more effectively. You're going to know how to install and deploy and configure WordPress with the right plugins. That's a lot of work. And trust me, small business owners and most persons, they don't want to do this thing, right? They want to do their business. So after a year or so, or sooner, you know, some people it could be much sooner, um, all of a sudden you're able to do the same work that took you 10 hours to do and you can now do it in five. But guess what? You can still charge the same. So all of a sudden you just doubled your rate. And then add another six months, some more automation, bang, 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 specialization, some other things that I teach. And then all of a sudden you're making triple, quadruple the money. So at the end of the day, I think it kind of all evens out to be totally honest with you in terms of what you earn. I gave that example in a pre recent video where I talked about uh, where I showed an, uh, a company, and I'll link to the video below. I showed a company where they uh, they were they were looking at salaries of different types of developers: PHP, Python, AI, Java, C sharp guys. And what you saw, and you if you watch that video, what you saw after three to four years, everybody's making pretty much the same amount of money, right? Everybody's making pretty much the same amount of money. So, how much you make? in the tech space has less to do, in many respects, you could argue, with the language or the framework or uh, what type of developer you are, has a lot more to do with how much experience you have, right? And that's why I say, learn your fundamentals, learn your foundations well of the languages, of the infrastructure of the web, etc. cetera, uh, how things are built, learn those foundations well, and then you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. So. People who are going, I don't want to do WordPress. Well, you don't have to do WordPress. You could do Node.js and build some stuff from scratch. You can do WordPress. But understand, it's also a different lifestyle. If you're doing small business development, by its very nature, you will have much more freedom as a professional, meaning you're going to have many different clients that you can deal with, right? Uh, all these small businesses mean smaller contracts. You know, it's better off, by, in my opinion, not in my opinion, I can tell you this from experience going back uh, decades. It's much better to have many, many, many small clients than it is to have just a few big clients. I've talked about this in the past. Why is it better? Because when you have a few, a few, when you have a few big clients, they know that they own you, right? Let's say you have only two big clients. So each one is half of your revenue. They know, they'll know, that you're that they're important uh, to you and as such they'll be able to negotiate harder on the price they'll be able to push you around more they'll be able to slap you around and if you lose them 
it will be very, very damaging because you're going to lose half your income. And they know that, so they'll leverage that against you. Again, stuff I teach in my courses. But if you have, on the other hand, 10 clients, each one is only worth, on average, 10% uh, of your income. If you have trouble with one of these clients, you just fire them. You say, bye-bye, bye-bye, you're not that important. If you have 20 clients, even better, right? Because they don't have control over you. Now, on the other hand, if you're somebody wanna go, you want to go work for somebody, that's cool. Um, I've talked about how to uh, create value, or in other words, how to become much more valuable to your employer so that they don't want to fire you. So that's another thing. But generally speaking, it's one of the uh, oldest lessons in the stock market. They say diversify, 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 meaning have many different income streams. That's why, you know, I'm preaching, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking my walk, if you will. I haven't worked for somebody since I was uh, 17, 18 years old when I was a bouncer in a nightclub. I prefer to be, uh, I've always preferred to have my own businesses, to be freelancer, to be independent in many different industries, etc. So there you have it. To wrap it up again, when you get into the web space, realize that there's a lot more work for small and medium-sized businesses where you need to upkeep, upkeep things, where you're not going to be, or modify current systems or sites. For every Node.js job building some crazy app from scratch, there's going to be thousands of jobs where you're going to be updating WordPress sites or deploying a, a Shopify. There's nothing wrong with that. And as I said, you know, with experience and workflows, et cetera, et cetera, the guy who's handling 20 clients, managing their Shopify and Wix stores and uh, installing WordPress here and doing this and that and the other thing is going to make just as much money, if not a lot more money, than the full stack web developer working on node for one company you know each has their pros and cons if you're not into managing a bunch of clients then you probably would prefer working in a company then you want to go for a certain thing but you know you could be working for a medium-sized company just managing their whole web presence which includes yeah, managing their wordpress managing their shopify site Managing their social uh, networking and their social uh, presence on the web, which is so important for business. As more and more brick and mortar stores close, I think there's going to be more a craft type of businesses, and uh, like the craft beers, the vinyl, the vinyl independent record shops, etc. Cetera, et cetera. There's, there's tons of things that are coming out now, and again, the web drives all this. So there you go. I hope this gives you a little bit of clarity in terms of what the job opportunities are and the business opportunities are with regards to web technology. That's it for now. Bye-bye.